Hi, this video is about trademark cease and desist letters. If you think someone is infringing on your trademark, your name, your logo, your slogan, I encourage you to watch this video or read my latest blog before you send a trademark cease and desist letter. My name is Melissa Diane Gulsaran Ranma and I am a trademark attorney. Okay, so say you started using a trademark. You might then file a trademark application with the USPTO. Then you wait about a year and a half and you get your registration certificate. That is not the end of the line. You need to make sure that you're actively policing and enforcing your trademark. You need to be out there looking for anyone who is using the mark in a way that you think is too similar to your goods or your services. You can't just receive your trademark registration and think that's it, you're good. You need to be out there and you need to actively enforce your trademark against infringers because if you wait too long the courts could say that you waived your right to enforce this before you send a cease and desist letter there are two steps that you should keep in mind so step one is to investigate you need to do as much as investigation as possible to see whether this other mark is too similar to the mark that you're using your trademark your registration you need to see how this other person is using the mark are they using it in a different state, only a state? Are they using it in a different country? We also need to see whether their goods or services are related to your goods and your services. So for example, the USPTO has a test called likelihood of confusion. So if you think someone else is infringing on your trademark, a court is gonna use this test to see whether a consumer would likely confuse the two marks as being from the same source. So for example, if you wanted to start your own salsa company and sell it in a grocery store and you wanna name it Taco Bell, say Taco Bell doesn't have this um, in their line or their industry, a court would likely side with Taco Bell in finding that that mark would likely confuse a consumer into thinking that that product came from Taco Bell, the restaurant. So you wouldn't be able to use that and that would be infringement. On the other hand, you have Delta faucets and Delta Airlines. They're able to coexist and use the same name because a consumer would not likely confuse the two. Another factor to investigate is whether this other company, this other person has a trademark registration or common law registration. So if you check the USPTO's website and you don't see that they have a trademark registration, that doesn't mean that you're the winner because you have a trademark registration. You still need to check whether they have common law trademark rights. Were they using the mark in a similar industry before you? That is key because priority is one of the main factors that come into play in terms of infringement. If this person was using the mark before you, they have common law rights to that geographic area and you can't stop them. And it's important because you don't want to put any specific dates in your trademark cease and desist letter because that could be used against you later in a court action. Now step two is to strategize. Say that you've done all this research, you need to decide how you want to enforce this mark. You can call them, you can ask them to stop using it, you can send them a message on social media, one of the more professional ways to go about this is by sending a cease and desist letter. Your cease and desist letter, it doesn't have to always be stern and mean. One of my favorite examples is involving the Jack Daniels cease and desist letter. There was an author who designed his book cover very similar to the Jack Daniels label. Jack Daniels, their trademark attorney, sent a cease and desist letter to the author It said that we appreciate the pop culture appeal, but we have to actively enforce their rights and they were willing to work with him to redesign his book cover for a reasonable amount. And you know, the rationale there was that you get more flies with Tennessee whiskey than you do vinegar or something like that. It was just a really fun way of saying, we have to do our job and we'd appreciate your cooperation, but it wasn't mean, it wasn't bullying and it got a lot of great publicity from just being so nice and it got the point across. So you don't always have to be mean, keep that in mind. In conclusion, always investigate your facts to make sure who has priority, how the mark is being used, uh, whether there's any likelihood of confusion, 
consult with a trademark attorney first because you don't want to send any correspondence in writing to another party that could come back to hurt you in the end. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me and subscribe to my channel and read my blogs. Thank you.